Welcome to the Shock Your Potential podcast with your host, Michael Sherlock. We all have potential, but sometimes we need inspiration to get us to our peak performance. Whether you are starting out in your career, ready to move up the corporate ladder, or taking the leap into entrepreneurship, Michael's guests provide powerful tools and resources to shock your potential. Shock Your Potential is a global professional development training company committed to your unique journey. Learn more about us today at shockyourpotential.com. Listen in to today's expert. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Shock Your Potential. I am your host, Michael Sherlock, and all month long, we are talking not only to entrepreneurs, but very elite entrepreneurs, those that are doing things that we should take note of and learn from every day. My guest today is John C. Morley. Now, he's a serial entrepreneur without a doubt. He's also an engineer and a marketing expert who started his first company a few decades ago. I'm just going to say nearly 30. But since the inception of his tech company, he had you know, something that all of us would love to have had. New York's largest marketing and advertising agency was working for him and his company. But like many of us also, he had that moment where he said, is this really getting me as far and as fast as I want to move this organization? And when the answer came back, no, he said, you know what? We're done. I fire you. You're fired. And he knew that no one would know his company as well as he did. And that's absolutely true. But for most of us, that puts us in a bind. In his case, he said, you know what? I'm going to research the concept of starting my own full in full in-house digital and print production company. I'm going to do it myself. And the first few years, he admits he made a lot of mistakes like any of us would, but he quickly realized how to reach his clients and the right way to do so. And later on, he concluded that there was a void in the marketplace without a doubt. And he knew how to market to companies to get their messages out to the world. And he trademarked the phrase, we give your business a voice. Today, John gets, helps people get more quality connections on LinkedIn by telling their stories in a very unique way. And I can't wait to learn from him more today. John, thank you so much for being my guest today. Michael, it is a pleasure and an honor to be with you this morning. I love it. And we're not too far away. I'm in you know, the beautiful city of Philadelphia. You are not so far away somewhere in New Jersey, but I just hit some of the highlights of your bio. Tell us a little bit more about you, your businesses today, and how you help your clients to shock their potential. So where it all started off was when I was in college. Uh, I think it was around uh, uh, 1993. So the company is about 32 years young. That's not my age, but 32 years <laughs> young is the is the first company, the IT company, started out as JCM and Son. I got teased for years after I graduated saying, John, stop being a paint company. I'm like, oh, be quiet. <laughs> and finally, one night, my mom, my dad, we came up with the name J Moore Connection. Hey, it sounds corporate -y. It sounds like it could stick. And before you know it, and several logos later, uh, <laughs> the name and the concept uh, you know, took off. But the thing was, when I was in college, and I still am today, I like to help other people. That's something I just have a passion. Also, being a first responder, I like to help others. And I find that a lot of people in the world are always looking to take or what's in it for me, WIFM, what's in it for me, mm -hmm. instead of WIFY, what's in it for you? So I right. like to do what's in it for you, which we learned from Dale Carnegie. Say somebody's name properly. Mm -hmm. And drive to become genuinely interested in the other person. I'm bored. The other people are interested. But what <laughs> got me on the path in college was I knew that there was a void in the technology market and people weren't doing the right things. And I decided to start JC and Son when I was in college. And I did technology very inexpensively before I had my degree. I did $5 for a phone call. Didn't matter how long it was. And $10 for an on-site visit. Again, didn't matter how long it was. And mm -hmm. so I remember people say, well, do you take credit cards? I'm, like, I'm just a small company. We take a check or we take cash. And that's when I learned I'd like, the government. I'd like a five or a $10 bill, please. <laughs> no, I can't make change. <laughs> I said, you're welcome to tip, but there's no extra charge. And they're like, well, how do we pay you? Well, you can shove it under my dorm room. You know, I'll trust you. There wasn't really a big issue with that. And uh, it, it worked out pretty well. And I learned you could make a certain amount of money before you had to get formal. I learned about that. Obviously, we didn't make that much, but we made a little bit. Professors were even calling me. In fact, my uh, professor, who was a doctor who knows everything, um, was calling me for computer help. 
Nice. But he didn't like me because I seemed to be a little smarter than him in some areas. <laughs> and so he would talk to me. But even when he asked for my help, he would talk down to me. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't know how to fix that. I'm like, actually, I do. Oh, and he's kind of like, you know, sitting back in his chair. So I did that for a little while. And I remember just before um, I was getting out of college, there was this modem. It was called Prometheus. I'm not sure if you ever heard of it. Yeah. But it was the uh -huh, first yes. modem that was able to do more than just talk to bulletin board systems and stuff like that. It actually was able to be a voicemail like these Fortune 500 companies. Oh, this is great. I could have one of these. Right. No store had them in stock. So I did some digging. Again, I'm not a formal company by the terms of the uh, you know US Treasury. And I said, how do I get this? So I called up some of the companies and they still didn't have it. I said, where do you get your product from? Oh, we go to a distributor. Well, what's a distributor? And who do you <laughs> use? So then I found the number of the distributor. I finally got through after being persistent because we only talk to people with accounts. I'm like, well, how do you get an account if you don't, if you yeah. want to talk to me, you don't have you one. Talk, if you won't talk to me. Right. <laughs> okay. That's another department. And mm. so I got through the salesperson. They gave me the SKU. They gave me the price. I said, here it is, John, but you can't buy it until you have an account. Mm -hmm. I said, wow, the price is how much? They said, well, it's only $199. I said, it goes for $499. I said, well, there's a big markup. So you mean I get yeah. to buy it for $199? I went, yes, you can. And this is also not for resale. I said, wow. And if you get that price, it's $150. I said, wow. So then I spent another couple of weeks. They said, you need something called a tax ID number. <laughs> yep. said, a tax ID number. I said, wow, how do I get one of those? Oh, they're free. Yeah. You just go online and you have to incorporate or file a business. And then you have to apply for a tax. So that sounds really awesome. Yeah. Got the number, realizing that the tax ID number helps you get an account, but yeah. it actually creates a liability. So mm -hmm. now the state of New Jersey. No more Jersey, $5 bills Jersey, under the, yeah, no more $5 bills now, under the door. You floor. could do it for consulting, but it, certain things are taxable. So if I yeah. do an installation with the product, that becomes taxable. Consulting is not taxable in New Jersey yet, right. which is nice. And so I did that, started that company, wrote my first invoicing software with, I remember to this day, it was called, um, I used Axis, which was terrible. So I looked for something better. I, I looked, I got Foxit, uh, uh, which uh, I think it was, um, it was, it was a, uh, I'm not sure if that was the exact name, but it was a database program. It was, it was right, uh, um, it was right after Axis. Uh, it, it, it wasn't Fox, it was, it was like Fo something, um, Fox database, something, because Fox is <laughs> another program, that's a PDF program, but it was something with a Fox. And so um, I got this program, and I didn't know anything about it. So I playing around with it. I was calling Microsoft every single day because things didn't work. I mm -hmm. wanted to get the reports to work. And I was spending a lot of money with them. But the funny thing was, I would always explain to them how they hadn't helped me. And so huh? every time I called them, I got my phone call rebated back. Because it says if they can't help you, and they would change the billing from $4.99 back to $1.99 because they weren't sure. They said, well, you know, you're going to rebate me back. Well, you can call customer service. I said, well, you didn't solve the problem. You don't even know your own software. So I spent months doing that. And then after doing that, I realized that I really should buy a program because there's just a lot in there. And I don't want to spend years doing it. So I went through a lot of accounting programs and I found a lot of them out there. They rip you off <laughs> and then you're kind of indebted to them. So I later went to a solution where I bought it, but I had the ability to learn how to develop into it. So it could become a little bit of my own without having to be you know, relying on that. Later on, as you had uh, discussed, I, um, when I was not even out of college, I had this uh, marketing advertising company. I won't mention their name. They're still in business today um, uh, you know, in Manhattan. And they still serve some of the major Fortune 500 companies, unfortunately. And uh, I went with them because a good friend of mine said that um, they could help me. I said, but I can't afford them. Oh, don't worry. My, my uh, uncle works there. He's going to get us a great discount. <laughs> they got us a discount at the time. I think it was 20, 30% off. And I thought that was like I'm phenomenal. He's like, John, this is so good. You have to go with them. So I'm <laughs> spending thousands of dollars with them. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. You're going to make it all back. Just don't worry about it. And we get something, but never what we paid. And so yeah. finally, about 10 years back, I said, you know, this isn't going anywhere. And I'm spending so much money. My IT company is growing, but nobody can really market me. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about marketing, advertising. Everyone always says to me, John, you're never going to be a marketer. You're never going to be an advertiser. I say, you know what, John? You got to stop listening to people. You got to believe mm -hmm. in yourself. <laughs> then I went back. This was right after college. Again, diving back. 
I went back and got my uh, certification hypnosis, NLP, neuro linguistic programming. Um, and um, also I got my uh, a Reiki level two certification, not to sell it to anybody, but just to help myself become a better version of myself and mm -hmm. to help motivate myself and stop paying people to tell me mm. what I should and shouldn't be doing. <laughs> and I remember creating my first um, MP3 at the time, because that's the sound ones. And mm. I didn't want to buy the Apple. I wanted to buy the cheap ones. It was a little knockoff one for like, I think, $29. And mm -hmm. I was so happy I made my first subliminal hypnosis program. And I would watch, listen to it every night. And then I see, you know, I want this luxury car. And um, it was out of my means at the time. And I said, um, let me go drive it. Let me go experience it. Let me get a picture of it. I put it on my mm -hmm. laptop. I don't know how, but in six months, that car was in my driveway. Yeah. And yeah. so I started learning about manifesting. And then I realized, uh, jumping back in the future again, 10 years back, and we're kind of flashbacking here. <laughs> 10 years back or so, I decided I had enough. So I went to Xerox, who were already client of, and we had... Uh, a Xerox uh, black and white copier and multifunction machine, fax machine, et cetera, on one. And I said to them, how do I become a mom and pop print shop? Mm. They said, oh, that's really easy. It's just 200. I said, oh, no problem. I'll give it to you right now. 200, no, 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 200,000. <laughs> I said, uh, let me get back to you. Fast forward, went to my bank, bing, bing, bing. They said, yes. Signed on the dotted line. They took me to lunch, yada, yada. <laughs> and then I uh, went into this firm and I knocked on the door. Hi, Greg. Uh, it's John. Oh, hey, how are you? You want some donuts? You want some coffee? You want some muffins? <laughs> we got some bagels. We got those yeah. things that Cindy makes for you, the, the special raisin buns. I'm like, no, I'm good. Listen, I was calling to say thank you. Thank you. Because we had a great run. What do you mean? We had a great run and we're done. Mm -hmm. What do you mean we're done? Well, I'm coming to say that I no longer need your services. Oh, you know, John, hang on a second. Let me see if Mike's in his office. <laughs> you know, that's Mike in here. Mike, like, yeah. hey, Mike, Mr. Morris. Hey, how are you, John? Nice to see you. I'm like, nice to see you too. Uh, you know, John's not very happy. Oh, no problem. Why don't we grab your coat? Let's go to the diner and we can talk about, <laughs> you know, Cindy made those buns that you like. No, I don't want, you want coffee, you want bagels, you want you. I don't want anything. Well, what's up? I just told your uh, boss here that we're done. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, we're done with the project and we're going to move to another one. No, no, we're done. Like we're done, mm -hmm. done. I don't get you. Well, I just fired him. I'm mm -hmm. now formally firing you and I'm firing everybody under your team. Yep. In other words, you're fired. <laughs> He's trying to process this. He's like, uh, John, I'll tell you what we're going to do. You know, we should have done this a long time, but we're going to give you a 30% discount. Oh, yeah. On yeah. everything going forward. And any bill you paid in the past, we're going to give you that money toward future invoices. I said, that's really nice. I said, but I'm not interested. John, you know, I'm probably going to get fired for this. But I like you. You're a good guy. We've been working with you before you even graduated. I said, no, you were taking my money before I even graduated college. And my dad's money. He's like, yeah, I shouldn't do this. We're going to give you 40%. I'm probably going to lose my hat. Don't, don't fire me, guys. We're going to give Mr. Roy 40% off anything he spent in the past. That's a lot of money. And 40% going further. All right, so we're gonna sign up. We'll do that now. We'll get some get some breakfast. Like, no, no, we're done. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, what do you mean we're done? I said, we're done. You don't understand that we're not negotiating. We we are done. Mm -hmm. Um, I said, you want me to go into why? I said, you know, you made this mistake. You made this mistake. You charged me for this. You did do this wrong. I said, I could go into a lot of things. That we're done. And he's like, uh, you know, John, we're like best buds. I mean, that's like below the belt. He's like, that's yeah. really low. I said, well, you know what's really low? Taking somebody's money and then not giving a return for many, many years. Yeah. Well, buddy, we're just learning about you. You got to put more in. We're just getting started. Yeah, but for how long? Yeah. Right. You don't even know anything about my industry. You haven't done a tech business in, in your life. Our company has. Yeah, but you haven't. You've only been with the firm two years since uh, another year I'm getting ready to graduate. You haven't been here that long. Yeah, but we like you. I like mm -hmm. you too, but business is business. So he says, well, who are you going to use? I said, well, there's a new company that I'm going to use. They're in Franklin Lakes. They're right across the street from me. They're going to open up soon. He says, oh, he says, what's the name of them? I gave him the name of the company, Neighbor Publications. Oh, I didn't see them when I was at your place. I said, no, they hadn't opened yet. They're across the street from us. Oh, okay. Uh, well, who's the sales manager? I gave him the sales manager, Ricky something. He says, uh, 
oh, I don't know him. He said, I know every sales manager in this industry. Uh, who's the owner? And I kind of moment over breath, Jerome, he said, who's the owner? And I said, he's like, isn't that your name? I said, yes. <laughs> so, oh, buddy. He's like, you don't know a thing about printing marketing advertising. So you know what? You're hundred percent right. Mm -hmm. but you didn't either when you started and mm -hmm. I'm going to fail probably my first year or two, but then I'm going to grow. He's like, you know, buddy, I want to stop you. I don't want to see you go out of business. I, I really <laughs> feel for you and I want to help you. So um, we struggled for the first couple of years. And then after that, uh, we built a full print production, graphic media, and digital design center. And then we had COVID, unfortunately. So we're kind of reopening yeah. again. Uh, yeah. So that just happened. And uh, he comes to me and he says, John, he's, how you doing? I said, we're doing great. Well, listen, John, I want to sit down with you with Mildred. Okay, we're done. No, no, I know you're done. But we figure we want to help you because, you know, you're, you're not used to this kind of volume. Like, you're not used to this. So we want to come down, maybe take you to lunch. And let's see if maybe we could take some of those clients over your hand. You could still market them with your name, but we'll do the work. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, why on earth would I do that and mess up a beautifully perfect, almost reputation? Well, because we have the name with the experience. Yeah, you haven't done squat. Mm -hmm. I said, I got a better concept. Why don't we take some of your clients that you're about <laughs> ready to lose, okay? Um, or some of the jobs that you can't really do, bring them over to my production team. We'll do the work. You can brand it. And you can market up and make some money. Your client will get an ROI and they might actually stay with you. How is that for a cookie for breakfast? <laughs> he said, I, I have to talk to somebody. He said, that's not how we work. I said, I don't think we really have much to talk about. So we pursued, we went on and on. And uh, many years, so, so Jay Moore was basically neighbor Publications' first client. And I remember mm -hmm. renting space to that company for $5 a month, just so it was kind of formal. And right. we had a little spot in the corner and um, we called ourselves a print and marketing company. We just had a little tiny piece of the office. And I was just so happy I could produce flyers. I could produce, you know, little things. I could produce business cards. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was really happy. And we did some mailings. And I said, you know, I said, then I got my first client, which was a, um, an insurance company. And I was tickle pink. And I say, you know, we can't work like, then I decided to print a magazine. I said, this is a lot of work. I said, we ran for yeah. four days, 24 hours a day. I hired three shifts to do it because I couldn't do it. And I started realizing that this is not the way to run a print company. You can't grow like this and you can't be working 24 hours a day. You have to have the right equipment, the right people. I said, this isn't going anywhere. And I said, I got to make a decision. It's nice that Jay Moore is getting all these things that it needs for itself. But do I really just want to have a toy or do I want to have a business? Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided to go for my lungs and build a new center. And then I say, you know what I really love to do? I love to do video. I said, I want to expand and have a video production center. I want to, this year we opened up a photo center. In fact, we're launching a photos with Santa. And next year we'll be launching our own green screen studio. So a lot of times nice. when you go to a green screen, you probably can appreciate they charge you three, $4,000 to get maybe a minimum for three or four hours. We're mm -hmm. charging under a hundred bucks for 20 minutes. Nice. And what we're doing is we're doing 25 minutes of setup and we time you 20 minutes. So we do that. Um, we do all kinds of photos. I looked at what a lot of these superstores are doing and they have the equipment, but not the greatest equipment and they don't have the right knowledge. So I said, if I have the knowledge and better equipment, I bet I could beat them eventually. And so mm -hmm. our photo thing just started. We just launched it. And um, we've been doing videos religiously for, oh gosh, over a year. I probably shoot over 40 hours of video a week. Wow, very uh, I have a, a link I'll show later. I have a, a John C. Morley Serial Entrepreneur Motiv Motivational Channel. Uh, every night on LinkedIn, I stream out to a million people. I have a, a thing where I give people value. I interact. Uh, I have an Envision networking channel, how to network with John, where I do science experiments and like we did one to build a rocket. I say, you have to rocket. Why do you want to rocket your desires? And I show you how to make one. And then I go through the process and we let it catapult. One of my favorite ones um, that I did is, was on my motivational channel. I said, why do you need to, how do you imagine? People are like, how do you imagine? You have to play like you're a kid. And mm -hmm. I took bubbles and I just kind of, so I just love to do stuff like this. And I run an internship school where I have about five interns now working with me. Mm -hmm. And every Friday we shoot from about eight o'clock in the morning till about five o'clock at night. That's our big shoot day. Wow. I'm president of the Franklin Lakes Chamber of Commerce, uh, which I reenacted over five years ago, made a 501c3. 
but I'm just all about helping people. I am a first responder and I'm going for my next level next year, which will be my EMT, um, currently a CERT and, uh, and uh, radio license FCC. So I do a lot, but my biggest thing is teaching people how to network. It's not about taking a card and shoving it down someone's throat. It's mm-hmm. not about telling you everything I do. Uh, you're interviewing me, so I'm telling you. But normally, it's not <laughs> about that. I'm boring. It's usually all about you. And so that's what I do whenever I meet somebody. It's like, you know, and I listen and I get permission. Well, it sounds like you're having a challenge in your marketing area. Is that something you're open to solving? Yeah. Okay. Well, what have you done in the past? And then if they're open, I go further. If they're not, I'm like, Okay, well, if you ever change your mind, I'm here to have a conversation because I believe all business is about conversations. I'm also the leading, the host of the Jay Moore Tech Talk Show, a national talk show. We have about oh, 20, 30,000 people, and we just became a TV show uh, about seven months ago in Princeton U. Uh, so we do that. So I just like to give a lot of value back to people. And when I talk to people in the marketing uh, or advertising, I say, look, I say, you know, we're different than other companies, but you're not going to find that out. I had an author that wanted us to work with them, but he had an issue. He had two LinkedIn profiles. I said, I can't work with you. Well, what's wrong? I said, well, you have one name here and one name there. Oh, yeah, I noticed you're the v- vice president of sales at this x-ray company and you're writing a book. Yeah, he's like, we have to keep them separate. I'm like, I can't. Because mm-hmm. if I get you a press write-up, Somebody's going to say, why is there a difference in spelling? Yeah, Mm. well, you can't mention. I said, I can't work with you. Like if I get you coverage and now your boss comes back, yeah, that could be a problem because I could get fired. Well, Mm. it sounds to me like you got to make a decision and I can't make that decision for you. And I'm not going to be responsible if I get you fired because you're not ready to come out of the closet about your other business. And he's like, I never thought about that. So I guess I just love to have conversations with people and understand what their challenges are. But the way I shock people um, with my potential is I'm genuine. Mm -hmm. And everything I do is from my core. Uh, The agenda that I have is to help everyone become better versions of themselves. And I share a story that's very relevant. Before I got into doing my business full-time, I got out of college. Obviously, there wasn't a lot of money, so I took a government job. I won't mention where, but I took a government job, and I was an IT technical services coordinator, way under what my degree was. Helped them with quite a bit, managed over 1,000 computers and three buildings, and I didn't feel I was appreciated. And I knew I wasn't there forever, and I was two months from being vetted, which would mean I would have gotten some big money because I was going to be vested. Mm -hmm. And I went into the lady, I'll call her Gina. That's not her name, but I'll call her Gina. I knocked on Gina. Hey, it was like, I think it was two weeks before I was going to get best. I walked to Gina. I said, hey, Gina, I said, I want to say thank you. Thank you for what? Just want to say thank you. (laughs) Or I said, I say thank you. I had a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I -hmm. did. I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot about myself. And I want to thank you for helping me become a better version of myself. Uh, Oh, and hopefully it helped you become a better version of yourself. She's looking at me like, where's this guy going? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be finishing out today. And um, I won't be coming back uh, mm-hmm. to, uh, tomorrow. Oh, okay. So this is an exit interview. Well, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm done. Oh. And I walked out and people were like grabbing me, but it was different. For the first time, people were like patient with me. They were knowing that they only had a few more hours with me, but they weren't being so demanding. And Mm -hmm. it just kind of changed. And I'm like, if this would have been like this before, I probably would have stayed. Mm -hmm. And so what I've learned is everything happens in life to help us become better versions of ourselves. Uh, We meet people, we go in business, we go out of business, uh, we network with people, relationships happen. We get pod show guests and all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff because we're all learning from each other. And I say to people, the day that you stop learning, and I don't mean to be more, but it's the day you're dying. Yeah, you need absolutely. to be learning every single day of your life. So I shock people because I really um, switch things up. Or as Emerald would say, I kick it up and knock. We are learning a lot of lessons. And I know I, I interrupted you right before the break about a story. So I want to get the story. But I also want to know, you know, maybe the top couple things that you've really learned on your entrepreneurial journey. So the story actually ties into a big lesson that I learned. So I think it's very Perfect. apropos. 
I, uh, about five years ago, I mentioned to you that I uh, kind of took over a chamber of commerce because it was going nowhere and people were doing wrong things and stealing. And I decided stupidly that I wanted to take this over. So I approached the, uh, the town and whatnot, and they kind of appointed me in. And everything was great. But then, you know, what happened after I started getting going, people weren't moving quick enough for me. So I'm a mover and a shaker, if you haven't already guessed. <laughs> and so, so I uh, got some comments from them that, um, you know, they weren't sure about things. And I remember a head person, I won't mention the name, but the person called me into their office after they booked time with me. And uh, he said, John, you know, when are you going to give up? Hmm. Said, Excuse me. When are you going to give up with this whole chamber nonsense? I mean, how many members do you really have? I said, well, we got about 30 and growing. Yeah, when are you going to give up? We don't really need a chamber. Well, the, when am I going to give up? Yeah, when are you going to give up? When are you going to just stop this whole nonsense and just pack it in? All right. So you just give me a minute. I want to think about that. I want to give you the exact um, day, hour, minute, and second. I'm going to give it. Just give me a minute. <laughs> it's like wondering. I come back and I say, you know, sir. I'll tell you when I'm going to give up. I want to be honest. I didn't want to lie to you. Oh, okay. When? Tomorrow, next week? I'm going to give up when a little baby boy or a little baby girl tells their parents that they don't want to learn to walk anymore. <laughs> he looks at me. He goes, when the blank is that? And I said, well, you are a parent, correct? He says, you have two boys. Or girls. Yes. I said, okay, well, when have you ever known your children or maybe your friend's children to ever say they want to stop learning how to walk doing these funny like really hard faces mm -hmm. he goes never i said you know i knew that you were always a bright and intelligent man and would come with the right answer you know what he said to me john you're arrogant now get out of my office <laughs> and I realized something that day taught me something that was only about a few years ago, but that taught me something really big that I included in one of my motivational lessons, which I do every single day and evening and Fridays, I do super motivational Friday. If everybody likes you in this world, mm -hmm. okay, it's great to be liked and I'm liked by a lot of people, but if there's not a few people that kind of dislike you, not hate you, but they might dislike you or just don't support you, mm -hmm. that's what you want. Because if you don't have that, everybody loves you, you're not bringing your A game. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's, a very, that's a very big lesson. So another lesson I've learned in the entrepreneurial world is that you can be or have anything you want, but you have to realize that your inner voice, what you say to yourself, your motivation runs your subconscious and that's 95 percent of who we are every single day and how our life runs see we're like a program but mm -hmm. most people don't realize it could take 30 45 or 90 days to actually reprogram ourselves you probably didn't know this ladies and gentlemen but you've been programmed since birth and after that to do things you may or may not want to do so mm -hmm. i would tell you to look at the things you're doing and realize do you really want to do that or are you on auto program you might mm -hmm. be so into the motion of doing something. Oh, I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to see that. Or I really don't want to be in this job. Well, why are you in it? Mm -hmm. Well, my parents like it, or they want me to be a lawyer. Or, you know, my cousin said to do this, or my boyfriend said it would be good. Or my girlfriend said, you know, no one in life, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you this up front, has the right to make you feel inferior about yourself, except one person. Mm -hmm. you. Exactly. So you need to understand that you have to give permission and you're not going to give permission. The other thing that I've learned is that you have to know when to say no. We're both mm -hmm. nice people, Michael. We always want to say yes to everyone, right? We want Absolutely. to do the right thing and be charity. And I remember whether it's a skill, whether it's marketing, whether it's IT, and I can't tell you how many times this has happened. Uh, this is probably over five or six years ago where I would be so nice, I would just do it. They would ask me, I would do it. And at the end of the thing, I told them what it would be. They said, oh, it's just gonna be something quick. And uh, well, what do I owe you? Now they know what I charge per hour. I was like, oh, you know, I really can't afford to pay you right now. Uh, how about a TV dinner or how about some pizza? 
<laughs> or people that just come around when they need something. Yeah. Right. Uh, these are also the same people that, you know, you're on Facebook or you're on LinkedIn saying, hey, would you do me a favor? I had one just a few months ago. Would you post this to your mom's group for me? And just share me a, a copy of the thread. A week or two went by. I'm back. I said, hey, um, I never got that picture. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said, could you post it again? Here's the link. Oh, yeah, John, I'm not comfortable about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, so what are you not comfortable with? Me, the organization? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I didn't say anything about it. I just filed it in the back of my head and said, okay, I now know that person is a taker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just moved them to the side. I'm never rude to anybody, but you have to realize that. The other thing I want to tell you, entrepreneurial journey, probably the third lesson I want to include is that people will say and do things regardless of what you think or believe. Your perceptions change the reactions. Patanjali said it best, which we learned from originally Dr. Dwayne Dyer, who was a great man. Perceptions. When we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Absolutely. Without so it, it's, it's important. And, and I guess the real quick sentence I'm going to tell you, lastly, a really important note is that if you feel in life that somebody's saying something that isn't true about you, could be an accusation, could be anything, because people are jealous in our life, let's face it. Mm -hmm. My advice to you is to document appropriately with whatever authority, whoever you have to document things, because people will try to rain on your parade every single day. And mm -hmm. once you let them know, I'm not saying to be rude, I'm not saying to take them to court, I'm saying protect yourself, because mm -hmm. people every day will be trying to kick you under the fire. You got to be resilient and make sure that when they put you to the fire, you're ready to protect yourself with the gloves and armor you need. And I then know. these people will either go away. Mm -hmm. They may try to fight a little bit till they get tired, but eventually they're going to look foolish to other people. Mm -hmm. So document what you do and what other people say, because Every day, people are going to court because of what somebody says, but they have no proof. So no. being an entrepreneur, you're going to run into that many times, that a lot of times people say what you're doing is, you know, something, but you're not. So document it and realize that you're going to be the winner. And don't let these, these uh, bad spectators who are supposed to be spectators and watching the game, they're trying to coach or trying to get involved mm. with the game. Don't let them be part of your life. Realize that your team, your inner team is the one you want with you. And if it's other people, keep them outside your circle. I agree. I agree. Keep yourself protected in all cases because it will be good for your psyche as well as your ability to continue. Now, John, Absolutely. I know um, we're going to have all of your contact information on our show notes, but just in case mm -hmm. somebody wants to find you, what's the best way for them to find you? So there's a lot of ways to find me, but we made it really simple. We have a link tree and link tree is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E -E forward slash my name, J-O-H-N-C-M-O-R-L-E-Y and then serial entrepreneur, all one word, S-E-R-I-A-L-E-N-T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-U-R. -E 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 and there you can see all the works that I do and you can even help keep our content free, which my team and I always appreciate a cup of coffee. Absolutely. I love it. Well, John, before we go, do you have any last words of wisdom or pearls of advice for my listeners and viewers? Yeah, the, the, the real pearl that I have for you today is that if you have a vision and it's clear in your head, be very descriptive and make sure you know every little detail about it. Don't worry about how you're going to get there, but just make sure you understand all the details. The universe will unfold that to you if you are persistent and have a good attitude and make sure that you maintain an attitude of gratitude. I love it. Absolutely. John, thank you for sharing your story with us. I think a lot of elements that people can relate to and for sharing your motivation for how to keep going and make it through even the tough times. Thank you so much for being with us today. It has been a pleasure and an honor to be with you today, Michael. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Shock Your Potential podcast. Learn more about us today at shockyourpotential.com, including details on Michael's two best-selling books. Tell me more 
how to ask the right questions and get the most out of your employees, and sales mixology, why the most potent sales and customer experiences follow a recipe for success. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and like us today.